40 Hadith and Exposition Second Revised Edition Author Sayyid Ruhullah Musabi Khomeini 30th Hadith The Kinds of Hearts Arabic Text English Translation With my continuous chain of transmission reaching up to the Thiqat al-Islam Muhammad ibn Yaqub al kulaini from a group of our companions, from Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Khalid, from his father, from Harun ibn al-Jaham, from al-Mufaddal, from Sa'ad, from Abu Ja'far alayhi salam, that he said, Verily, the hearts are of four kinds. The heart that has both faith and hypocrisy in it. The heart that is inverted and upside down. The heart that has been sealed and is darkened. And the heart that is clear and luminous, al-Azhar. Sa'ad, the narrator, says, I asked him, what is meant by al-Azhar? He replied, it is a heart that has the likeness of a lamp. As to the heart that has been sealed, it is the heart of a hypocrite. The heart that is luminous is that of a believer, who is thankful when God gives him and is patient when subjected to tribulation. As to the heart that is inverted, it is the heart of the polytheist. Then he recited this verse, what is he who walks prone upon his face better guided, or he who walks upright on a straight path? Surah 67, verse 22. Then he added, As to the heart wherein is faith and hypocrisy, they were a people who lived in Taif. So if one of them should die in the state of hypocrisy, he would perish, and should he die in the state of faith, he would attain salvation. Exposition Mankus means inverted, maqloob. The lexicographers explain, Arabic text, English translation. That is, I inverted something or I put it means upside down. According to as al-walad al-mankus means a baby whose feet at birth come out before its head. Arabic text, English translation, closely associated is the meaning of makban ala wajh in the noble verse cited by the imam, for ikbab means falling on one's face, and therein is a figurative indication of the fact that the hearts of the polytheists mushrikun are inverted, and their course of spiritual movement is other than the straight path, as will be elaborated later on, God willing. Matbu'ah means sealed, makhtum and ta'ab, with sukun of the ba' means sealing, khatm, and with its harakah, that is ta'ba, means impurity, denis, wasakh. If it be taken in the sense of sealed, it would figuratively mean that the word of truth and divine truths do not enter such a heart, and it does not accept them, not that God, the exalted, deprives it of his special grace, although the sense is also true. However, the aforementioned sense is more appropriate. Azhar means white, abyad, and luminous mustanir, as mentioned in Al-Nihaya. According to as Azhar means bright, nayir, and the moon is called Azhar. Ibn Sikid says, Al-Azhar means the sun and the moon. Azhar, when spoken of a man, means a white man, of a bright face, and such a woman is Zahra. To sum up, Azhar means luminous and white. Hence, the sun and moon are called Azharan. A white and luminous man is called Azhar and a white and luminous woman is called Zahra. Ajrad is someone who has no hair on his body. And according to Asiha, Al-Jurd means a treeless open space. And this figuratively implies the absence of attachment to the world or freedom from impurity and defilement. We shall expound that which needs explication in this noble tradition in the course of a preface and a few sections. Reforming the heart. It should be known that the term heart has various meanings in the terminology of the Sharia and that of philosophy and irfan. To discuss that and the related terminology differences, as well as the ranks and degrees of the hearts, is outside the scope of this discourse and is not very beneficial for us. Therefore, it would be better to take the matter in its unexplicated simplicity, as is done in the noble tradition, and discuss that which is important and essential for us. It should be known that the endeavor to reform the heart on whose wholesomeness and corruption depends one's felicity and wretchedness is more essential than an inquiry into its meanings and delving into the technical jargon. In fact, it often happens that intense attention to terms and preoccupation with words and that which relates to them makes one totally oblivious of the heart and its reform. As a result, 
One may acquire complete mastery in expounding the meaning and essence of the heart in the terminology of the metaphysicians, Hukama, the mystics, or Afa, while one's heart, Nu'abbid. Na'udhu Billah is one that is either inverted or sealed, like someone who knows well the beneficial and harmful properties of medicines and is able to describe them with expertise without himself refraining from poisonous medicines or making use of the beneficial ones. Such a person perishes despite all his knowledge of pharmacology, which is unable to rescue him. We said earlier that all the sciences are absolutely practical and even the transcendental sciences have a practical aspect in them. Here that which we have to say is that the science of the states of the heart and that which relates to their health and sickness reform and corruption is something which is purely a preliminary step to action and the way of its reforms and remedy. Its mere knowledge and understanding is not considered a human perfection. Hence, one's main attention and goal should be the reform and refinement of the heart so that one may attain to ultimate spiritual felicity and to the higher transcendent stations. And even if one were well adept in the sciences, the subtleties and the realities during the course of his journey through the horizons and the souls, his main concern should be the discovery of his own spiritual states so that if it were ruinous, he should try to remedy it and if oriented towards salvation, try to make it complete and perfect. The basis for the classification of the hearts. One should know that this classification of the hearts made in this noble tradition is one that is non-detailed in general. Every heart has a different rank and degree, whether it is from the viewpoint of shirk and hypocrisy or that of faith and perfection. Apparently, this classification of the hearts is subsequent to acquisition and spiritual conduct, not one based on the nature and constitution of different souls, so as to conflict with traditions concerning fitra, which state that all people are born with the nature of Tawheed and that shirk and hypocrisy are accidental and not innate in human nature. However, even if it were on the basis of nature, that would be correct in accordance with one explanation which removes the contradiction and does not lead to predestination, which is something impossible. Nevertheless, that which is closer to metaphysical proof and more conducive to education is the first probability, and we said earlier that as long as man remains in his world, this world, which is the source of the tree of primal matter, which it's with its substantial, formal, and accidental changes and transformations, he can deliver himself from all levels of deficiency, wretchedness, shirk, and hypocrisy, and attain to the higher levels of perfection and spiritual felicity. And this is not contrary to the famous hadith that states, Arabic text, English translation, the wretched one is wretched in his mother's womb. For the meaning of the tradition is not that felicity and wretchedness are innate and incapable of change. Rather, this tradition accords with metaphysical proof, which has been set forth in clarity in its proper place, that wretchedness is derived from deficiency and non-being, and that felicity derives from being and its perfection. That which belongs to the immaculate tree of being is the sacred divine being in accordance with the ranks of causes and means, which is the way of the best of the latter generations and the most perfect of the early ones. The Nasir of the Millah and Deen, that is Khwaja Nasir al-Deen al-Tusi, are on the basis of manifesting and being manifested, Zahiriya and Mazhariya, unity and multiplicity which is the way of the greatest of philosophers, as a Sadr al-Mutahalihin, and that which derives from deficiency and non-being pertains to the vicious tree of quiddity, which is not the object of creation because of its being below creation, Jal. It may be said that when the noble tradition says that felicity and wretchedness accompany one in the mother's womb, that which is meant is the world of corporeal nature, alam al-tabiyat which is the absolute mother, the womb and the cradle wherein nature nurtures its offsprings. That is, the expression mother's womb is not to be taken in its ordinary sense because felicity being perfection and actuality cannot belong to the primal souls, nafus al-hayuliyah, except potentiality. Since the literal import is that the felicious are felicious in act in the mother's womb, the contrary of the literal meaning has to be adopted. And since that which has been said is in accordance with metaphysical proofs, the noble tradition has to be interpreted solely in this sense or something in equivalent to it. In any case, any elaboration of this matter and discussion of its proof is outside the scope of this discourse, though at times the pen rebels and runs contrary to the set aims.
The reason why the kinds of hearts are confined to the four. Some scholars have said that the reason for confining the kinds of hearts to four is that the hearts either possess faith or they don't. In the first case, the faith possessed pertains to all that the messenger has bought, or only to a part of that. The first is the heart of the believer, mu'min, and the second is a heart wherein faith and hypocrisy are both present. In the second case, there is either an outward confession of faith or there isn't. The first is the heart of the hypocrite and the second that of a polytheist, mushrik. This interpretation does not accord with the noble tradition, which implies that at times there is real faith in all that the Prophet ﷺ has brought and at times there is hypocrisy. Hence, if one were forced to interpret, it would be better to say that the heart either has faith in all that the Prophet ﷺ has brought or it doesn't. In the second case, there is either a pretense of faith or there isn't. In the first case, the faith is either stable and established in it, or it is unstable. Believing at one time and disbelieving at other times, making a pretense of belief in the state of disbelief also. The concluding part of the tradition shows that the repentance of those who apostatize after belief to revert to unbelief and hypocrisy is accepted even if it should occur repeatedly. In another tradition of the noble al-Kafi, Imam Bakhir al-Hissalam divides the hearts into three kinds, the inverted heart qalb al-Mankus, wherein there is no God, that is, an unbeliever's heart, the heart wherein there is a black spot in which there is a conflict between good and evil, each of which seek to overcome the other. Three, the open heart qalb al-Maftuh, wherein are lamps whose lights will not go out until the day of resurrection, that is the heart of the believer. This division does not conflict with the noble tradition under exposition, for the first category mentioned in the above tradition includes the two kinds mentioned by the hadith, that is, the hearts of the polytheists and the hypocrite. That is because the hearts of all those three groups, that is, the unbelievers, polytheists, and hypocrites are inverted, and no inconsistency would be involved in if inversion be considered the salient characteristic of the hearts of an unbeliever and polytheist and being seated the salient characteristic of the hypocrite's heart and accordingly each of them is ascribed to either of them in the tradition. The States of the Hearts We shall begin with the believer's heart so that the state of the other hearts be known in the contrast. It should be known that in the transcendental sciences and that the true teachings it has been clearly established that the reality of being is the reality of light. These two terms signify one simple reality without being attributable to any separate multiple aspects. It is also known that that which pertains to perfection and completion derives from being itself. This is one of the noble principles and to anyone who has the honor to apprehend it, the door to the higher teaching is opened. Our feeble spirits are unable to apprehend the reality of that being without a help from the hidden and a success predestined from eternity. It is also known that faith in God belongs to the category of knowledge and is one of the absolute perfections. Hence, being a perfection, it belongs to being itself and the reality of light and manifestation. And that which is other than faith and all that relates to it is outside the category of the perfections of the human spirit, belonging to the darkness of non-being and quiddity. The luminosity of the believer's heart. Hence, it is known that the believer's heart is luminous. It is narrated in the noble Al-Kafi from Imam Sadiq salam that he said, You see some people who are so perfect in eloquence that they don't err in the use of a single letter like lamb or wow, while their hearts are darker than a gloomy night. And there are some people who cannot express what is in their hearts, yet their heart is radiant like a lamp. Further, the believer's heart is on the straight path and his spiritual movement is on the middle path of humanity. That is because firstly, he has not destined, deserted his primal divine nature fashioned in 40 days by God, the exalted with the hands of his beauty and glory. Thus he walks on the path of the nature of Tawheed, oriented towards absolute perfection and consummate beauty. Inevitably, this spiritual movement from the plane of innate nature to the ultimate point of absolute perfection is without any crookedness, being as it is the path of spiritual rectitude and the in middle inner way. However, all other hearts deviate from nature and the straight path. It is narrated of the noblest messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he drew a straight line on the ground, drawing other lines on its either side.
Then he said, This one, the straight and middlemost line, is my path. Explanation of the believer's being on the straight path. Secondly, the believer is the follower of the perfect man, and since the perfect man is the manifestation of all the names and the attributes, and subject to the lordship of the truth, the exalted by virtue of the all-inclusive name, Ismail Jami, his being is not monopolized by any one of the names. Like his Lord, he is an all-inclusive being, and in him the manifestation of any of the names is not overshadowed by that of any other name. He possesses the station of middleness, maqam al-wasafiyat, and the major mediation, barzakhiyat al-kubra. Hence his movement is along the straight and middlemost path of the all-inclusive name. All other beings are dominated by one of the encompassing or non-encompassing names of which they are manifestations. Their origin and return is from and to that name. The name opposite to it is latent in it and plays no active role in it except from the aspect of the unity of all the names, something whose explanation is not appropriate here. Hence God the exalted at the station of the all-inclusive name and the Lord of men, Rabb al-Insan, is on the straight path as he says, Arabic text. English translation, Verily my Lord is on the straight path. Surah 11 verse 56. That means the station of middleness and all-inclusiveness, jamiyat, without the predominance of an attribute over another and without the manifestation of one name rather than that of another. A being subject to the lordship of that sacred being at the station is also on the straight path without any station or aspect overshadowing another station or aspect. Hence the believer in the course of his real upward ascension, the prayer and the ultimate point of proximity to the divine, after making an admission of servitude, after referring every worship and service by every worshipper to that sacred essence, and ascribing all help in the all the stations of expansiveness and straits, qabdu wa bast, exclusively to that sacred being, by declaring Arabic text, English translation, thee only we worship and thee only we ask for help. Surah 1 verse 5 says, اَحْدِنَ السَّرَاتِ mustaqim, Guide us to the straight path. Surah 1, Surah 1 verse 6. This is the same path as that of the Lord of the perfect man, the former from the active aspect of manifesting zahiriyat and lordship, rububiyat, and the latter from the passive aspect of being manifested, mazariyat, and creaturehood, marububiyat. None of the other existence and beings in movement towards Allah are on the straight path, but are deviant inclining either towards divine grace and beauty or towards might and glory. The faithful mu'minun, since they are followers of the perfect man and walk in his footsteps, they journey by the light of his guidance and the lamp of his knowledge, ma'rifah, in submission to the sacred being of the perfect man. They don't take any step by themselves and do not allow their intellect to meddle with the character of the spiritual journey towards Allah. For this reason, their path is also straight, and in the company of the perfect man, their fulfillment, wusal, is subordinate to the fulfillment of the perfect man. Provided that they protect their clear hearts from the workings of the devils, the ego and egoism, and submit themselves totally in the journey to the perfect man and the station of ultimate prophecy. Some stratagems of shaitan. One of the evil workings of shaitan is to make man turn the face of his heart away from the straight path and towards some co kuwetish person, shukh or guru, sheikh. One of the great masterpieces of shaitan who whispers into the hearts of men is that he, with gay and nonchalant discourse and deceptive manipulations, makes some spiritual gurus, shuyukh, enamored to some coquette, justifying this major sin, or an act of spiritual polytheism, on the pretext that if the heart were to have a singular attachment, one can succeed faster in curtailing worldly attachments." At other times, he turns some mindless coquette towards some demonic guru, one who seduces people or is rather a satanic highwayman. The pretext offered for this act of explicit polytheism, shirk al-jali, is that the guru is a perfect man and that only through the perfect man one can attain to the realm of absolute transcendence, which is not manifested except in the mirror of the guru. At the end of their lives, the two of them, that one with the memory of his favorite cheek and this one with the inverted face of his guru, join the world of demons and satans, and neither the former gets rid of his bestial attachment, nor the latter reaches the goal through this blind alley. 
It should be known that since the believer's journey is on a straight path and his heart is upright, his orientation is towards Allah and his way is the middle path. As a result, in that world too, his path is clear and straight, his posture upright and his appearance and character, his inward and outward, have a human form and shape. One can understand the character of the heart of the polytheists in contrast to this, as his heart deviates from the divine nature and strays from the central point of perfection and the hub of light and beauty, departing from submission to the absolute guide and guardian, Wali, and preoccupied with its own ego and egoism, the world and its ornaments. Consequently, in the other worlds also, it is not resurrected with the straight human character and form, but in the form of an animal with a head turned about. That is so because in that world, form and shape are subject to the character of the heart and the outward reflects the inward and the shell is the image of the kernel. The matter of that realm is not averse to accepting the inward Malakuti forms as in this world, and this thesis has been established in its proper place. Hence the hearts which are averse to the truth and reality and deviate from straight nature oriented and directed as they are towards the world, their image too, like themselves, deviates from straightness, being inverted, facing the world and physical nature, tabiat, which is the lowest of the law. Perhaps in that world some would walk on their faces with their feet upwards, some on their bellies, and some on their hands and feet like animals, the way they in fact walked in this world. Arabic text, English translation, is he who goes inverted on his face more rightly guided, or he who walks upright on a straight path. It is possible that the metaphor in the metaphoric world becomes a reality in the realm of reality and manifestation of spirituality in some tra noble traditions relating to the exegesis of this noble verse. The straight path is interpreted as referring to Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen and the infallible Imams alayhi salam, Arabic text. English translation, in Al-Kafi Al-Kulaini reports with his isnat from Abu Al-Hasan Al-Madhi, Imam Musa Kadhim alayhi salam, that Muhammad bin Al-Fudayl says, when asked concerning the meaning of the verbs, is he who goes inverted on his face more rightly guided, or he who walks upright on a straight path? The Imam replied, Verily God has struck a similitude in this verse. One who deviates from the wilaya of Ali salam is like one who walks on his face and is not guided. And he who has made one who follows him as one who walks upright on a straight path, and the straight path is Amir al-Mu'mineen salam. In another tradition, the straight path is explained as meaning Ali salam and the rest of the Imams salam. Also, it is narrated in the noble Al-Kafi from Fudayl that he said, I entered the holy mosque of Mecca with Imam Al-Baqir salam and he was leaning upon me. Then he threw his blessed glance upon the people as we stood at the door of Bani Shayba. Then he said, O Fudayl, they used to circumambulate in this manner even during the days of the Jahiliyyah. They neither recognized any truth nor followed any creed. O Fudayl, look at them. They walk inverted on their faces. May God damn them. They are a disfigured creation walking on their faces. Then he recited the noble verse, Is he who goes inverted on his face more rightly guided, or he who walks upright on a straight path? Then he added, By God, that means Ali alayhi salam and his awsiya alayhi salam. In the foregoing, we have explained how the journey and the movement of the perfect man are on the straight path. However, the exposition of the matter that the perfect man is the straight path itself is beyond our purpose in this discourse. The hypocrite's heart and the difference between it and the believer's heart. The states of the heart of the believer and the polytheist and even that of the unbeliever became known from the exposition in the foregoing section. A comparison also discloses the state of the hypocrite's heart. That is, because the believer's heart has not departed from its original innocent and clear nature and it naturally accepts any truths relating to faith and the true teaching. The harmony and compatibility between the nourishment which consists of the truths and the teachings and the nourished one, which is the heart in its state of original nature, is preserved. Hence, in another tradition of the noble al-Kafi, the believer's heart has been said to be open, maftuh, and although this opening may refer to one of the threefold openings, Futhat al 
falafa, this meaning is also appropriate. However, as the hypocrite's heart has obscurities and darkness formed in it contrary to the human nature, such as ignorant prejudices, blameworthy moral traits, vanity, ambition, and other qualities contrary to the primal nature, it is closed and sealed. It is not at all receptive to the world word of truth and its tablet is like a page of paper that is totally blackened on which nothing can be inscribed. Its pretense of religiosity arising from its satanic character is a means to be secure worldly benefit and advancement in mundane matters. It should be known that the hearts of the polytheist and the hypocrites are both inverted and sealed as is clear and evident, but the attribution of one of these qualities to each of them in particular is for the reason that, as the hearts of the polytheists are turned in worship towards other than that which is absolute perfection, they have two properties and characteristics, one is sincere humility in front of the object of worship, and another is deficiency and obfuscation created by this humility, which is diverted towards imperfect beings and creatures. Hence their hearts are inverted, and this is their predominant characteristic. As to the hypocrite, he's either a polytheist in reality, and in this respect he shares equally with the polytheists the quality of inversion of the heart, besides possessing an additional quality that is hypocrisy, or he is an unbeliever in reality and possesses no religiosity. Although his heart too is inverted, it has another quality which is predominant. That additional quality is his outward pretense of following the truth. He enters the congregation of the followers of the truth and hears all the truthful preachings that is heard by the believers. Yet while the believer absorbs them due to his inner purity and open heart, the hypocrite fails to receive them due to the darkness and obscurities of his heart, which is closed and sealed. The reason for singling out for mention from among the attributes of the believer, the two characteristics of gratitude on being favored with gifts and patience in trials is the salient character of these two among the believer's qualities. These are two of the major virtues from which other virtues branch out, and we have alluded to this in the exposition of some of the earlier traditions. Further, the tradition refers to two of the divine attributes of glory and beauty, of might and grace, each of which is manifested in the condition of tribulation and the condition of being well provided. And although tribulation belongs to the attributes of grace, but since it manifests through might, it is reckoned as belonging to it. As mentioned in the discussions on divine names and attributes, the believer always observes the duties of servitude between the two manifestations. Neglect of the truth results in the inversion of the heart. From the foregoing discussion, it is known that the souls, though they should have belief in God and resurrection, become inverted if they are totally absorbed by attention towards the world and preoccupied with mundane advancements while being neglectful of God. The criterion in respect of the inversion of the heart is the neglect of God and attention to the world and its cultivation. Such belief is either not, not faith, as mentioned in the exposition of some of the earlier traditions, or is an insignificant significant and an inadequate faith that is not inconsistent with the inversion of the heart. In fact, one who makes a pretense of belief in transcendence and resurrection but has no trepidation arising from such a belief, in whom this belief does not lead to act with his bodily members, such a one is to be considered as belonging to the hypocrites, not as one of the believers, possibly the sort of apparent believers like the people of Taif who in the noble tradition are mentioned as being typical of those who are believers at one time and hypocrites at another time, may altogether lose this hollow faith, which is no sovereignty in the realm of their physical bodily existence, mulk. They might leave this world in a state of complete hypocrisy, to be resurrected amongst the hypocrites. This is one of the crucial matters to which our weak spirits must attach great importance, taking care that the effects of faith become established in our manifest and hidden inner and outer being, in the same way as we claim to possess 
possess faith in the heart, we should make our outward being also subject to its authority, so that the roots of faith become established in our hearts not to be destroyed by any kind of obstacle or hindrance, transformation and change so that the divine trust of a celestial and pure heart fashioned with its divine nature is returned to the sacred being unaffected and unsoiled by the workings of shaitan and hands of treachery. And to Allah belongs all praise at every beginning and end. Bibliography End of 14th Hadith The Kinds of Hearts